Welcome, Min, and thanks so much for being on the podcast today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, Min is the owner of KO Picks, and you, you know, work across the U.S., but you're based out of Austin, correct? I am. I am. There's also another office out there in Boston somewhere. So <laughs> I have I have another office office out there too. So nice. So coast to coast, pretty much. Coast to coast. Trying to get up in that Canada coast too. <laughs> Any uh, single ladies in Canada? Call no, in. no, <laughs> no. That would be way too much traveling. That is a lot of traveling, but it's an easy way to get into Canada. <clears throat> Although I don't recommend it because it's also illegal. So you know, there's. <laughs> Wait, I can't get into Canada right now. I don't think so. Our borders really? are closed. Yeah. Oh no, I'm talking about like. If the bo if the borders were open, like I can't go into Canada. Oh yeah, like, if the borders were open, you could. Like, but won't take me. But we okay. won't let you live here for more than six months. And honestly, once the snow really? hits, you probably won't want to stay. <laughs> oh yes, that is the reason why I stopped uh, visiting my friend out there. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> the winter. Yeah, the winter. It's good times. That's so exactly tell me, Min, <laughs> why did you start your photo booth business? Well, let me tell you why. I was broke, <laughs> first off. <clears throat> so I was actually a wedding photographer or a wedding video videographer. Went from wedding photographer to wedding videographer. And then just late night sitting out and editing, you know, I'm thinking to myself, this is like the worst thing in the world. <clears throat> right? Have you ever edited videos before? The funny thing is yeah, I'm but... <laughs> actually I'm, I'm doing it right now and you're doing it right now. So yeah, I, I, I guess you do understand it. But wedding <laughs> wedding videos is completely different. Like you're recording for like hours and hours and hours. And then you have to watch it for hours and hours and like trying to match it up to a song and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, ooh, I got a bumble. No, but <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of, I mean, this kind of goes into the whole mindset of why I started in the first place. So I met a girl and she lived in Boston. And <clears throat> funny enough, I met her when I was selling Apple computers to clients. So she was actually a client of mine. Is this, can I put this on a podcast? Wait, I can't get <laughs> fired again, so it doesn't really matter. So she was one of my clients. <clears throat> I had no idea how she looked like or anything, so we started flirting over the phone. Anyway, next thing happens, we get together, and then something happens to where I'm like, okay, I'm going to move to Boston. Now, Boston living is completely different from Austin living, right? Mm -hmm. In in the sense of, like, money. The cost of living over there is so much more. So in the back of my mind, I was like, I need to figure out another job or another way to make some income <clears throat> Excuse me, in order to support myself and, you know, this new relationship over there. And so what had happened was I went to this event when I was recording a video for, for something, and I saw a photo booth there, and I was thinking, man, that's kind of cool. But it looks so raggedy. It was so ugly. <laughs> <clears throat> and Is I'm it a sure big black every, box? it I th I, honestly I don't even remember. I think it was a computer screen with like a webcam on top of it. Oh, kind of like how we're doing right now. But <laughs> we're not printing <laughs> pictures with this. <laughs> but we're not printing pictures with this. This is correct. So it was kind of in that sense, the uh, um that that kind of setup. And I'm sure we've all seen it, and that's kind of the same sense of how we a lot of us have started this whole photo booth industry ordeal and um and i was like man i could do this i could do this a lot better and so i started talking to the guy and i was like hey how, how much do you charge for this and he told me and i was like holy shit <laughs> holy beep <laughs> oh you can swear this is well, holy shit <laughs> like, it 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 was at that time i wasn't making as much as i was um now but like it was a lot of money that he was getting for that job. And I'm like, well, I could probably do this much better and probably charge a lot more. And then so 
I was gonna move over to I was gonna move to Boston within a month. So I had a month to build this photo booth, like figure out like all the softwares and whatnot, the lighting, um, set up a website, set up pretty much set up a whole business within a month before I moved. So <clears throat> I'm a handyman. I can make stuff. And so I started making my very first photo booth and it was obviously it was a big 80 20 put together kind of box and it had a webcam in it and i think i used is it spark something spark oh yeah yeah what i rem- i vaguely remember a it's photo a booth spark it's, yeah it's a spark something with the name spark in it yeah. <clears throat> and i used that program and i had it at the, my friend's event and then from there I was like, okay, well, this was easy to set up. And I set up my website within a week. Um, I built the thing within a week. I set up the website within a week. And then I was like, well, I need to get some more gigs or to get some some money here while I'm here before I move to Boston. So what I did was I went on Groupon, but not for the reasons that you probably think, okay? I did some guerrilla marketing. I went on Groupon. I was like, who's doing other photo booth events or having photo booth rentals? So, and at the time, you can see, um, like, you can link yourself or link, um, like, your Facebook and stuff like that. And there are some companies out there that actually link their Facebook and wanted their customers to go on their Facebook and ask questions. So, oh. <clears throat> what I did was I went on their Facebook and I answered those questions for them. Oh, no. (laughs) And took their customers. (laughs) I don't care. It was five of them. I took it from, uh, I I took it from them and, um, and I gave them the same pricing. So I booked five events like within that month. And then on the last, on the last event, I had my photo booth and, you know, I'm thinking, man, this thing is ginormous. Like, how am I going to put this in my car and take it with me to Boston? Well, I have to sell it or something. And so my last event came and it was at this party and there was a DJ there and the DJ came by and he was like, man, I love your photo booth. I was like, oh yeah, how much do you love it? And then I sold it to him the next day. Oh my God. You and, and so, you resell everything. <laughs> look, look. Okay. I re- I sold it to him the next day. It was perfect. Like I had to, se- I sold it to him. I gave it, I delivered it. The funny thing is I started this guy and I helped him start his whole photo booth ordeal. And now he's the biggest photo boother in Austin. Wow. It's crazy. That's crazy. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, and this, this actually happens a lot. Like every time I resell, Every time I make something, I resell it, and then I make it better, and then I resell that. Probably a, a good eight or nine times before I started like manufacturing, before I started mm-hmm. thinking, you know, I can probably do this, and people will buy more of it because I have a lot of people asking questions and stuff. And this is way before there was any forum help or any Facebook photo booth right. network kind of stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> so in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm one of the OGs. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I'm so young. But anyway, um, and so I started. Uh, so I started to uh, make them and sell them, like I was saying. And I started helping people. Like I would sell it, but then I would help them build their own site. And I think it was like five or six companies that I helped. Like within the month of me trying to move, or I'm sorry, <laughs> I helped one within the month of me moving. But then afterwards, probably like between the uh, an era of like five months or so, I started helping more people. Started building within like a week, selling, building, selling. <clears throat> and so I went to Boston and I built this really big one. You know, the ones that you actually go and you sit in. Yeah, but the but the cool thing was it it actually compressed. Oh, cool. So I made it to where it compressed, and it would fit in my car, my SUV. But one time 
I tried to put it in my SUV and I broke my back or my back went out and it was the first oh, time no. my back went out and I'm, and this thing was like 200 pounds. <clears throat> and, um, uh, and that's when I started to build them a lot smaller. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's when the whole lollipop style became a fad. Yeah. Instead of like the whole big box ordeal. Yeah. I will never forget that part. Like, Oh, I don't understand. And I'm like, oh my god, my back, my back is broken. Help me, my back is. I'm, I was literally like on the floor in the garage, like holding it up with one arm, like yelling for my oh, girlfriend no. at that time. Like, and I'm crying, like a little, yeah. And I'm crying, and um, and yeah, that's when I started making the smaller ones. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then from the smaller ones, it was easier to manufacture. So that's how I started getting into the game of manufacturing wow. but mm -hmm. i was still booking a lot of rentals um at that time um just trying to make it to where it would help me uh financially you know what i mean mm -hmm. because over there in boston it's like almost like twice the cost of living and i was working at home uh doing the apple job and also i was in school full-time Oh my God. Doing an internship in New York. So I actually, I worked, <clears throat> I lived in Boston, but I was interning in New York. So I would have to go over there at the same wow. time. So I had a whole bunch of things going on at, at the same time. And, um, and, and then it blossomed. <laughs> That's basically how it, how it got from point A to point B. Like, it started making more money than my actual job. Mm -hmm. And I was scared to like, I was scared to stop working for Apple because of, you know, the benefits yeah. and the uh, security of having a job. But I felt like it wasn't really going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So then <clears throat> I met this guy, which is one of my best friends in the photo booth uh, industry, which is Shay with pick mm -hmm. pick social and he convinced me to he convinced me to get out of my corporate job and to go full time he was like it's going to be the best decision you ever make mm -hmm. and so i was like you know what i guess i'll do it <clears throat> and then that and then 2000 i think it was 2012 no 2014 i think yeah, 2014 is when I made the jump to where I quit my corporate and went full time. Never looked back since. So it wasn't and the that's best how it started. You ever made. Hell yeah. Nice. Wait, that's baby. perfect. I, I got to pick this up. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> hey, this is Min. I'm on a podcast. You spam me, mother. <laughs> you get them too. Oh my God. I don't even answer my phone anymore. I'm being oh, arrested but, by well, the, the CRA <clears throat> every day. And CRA is like I, CRA? our IRS. <laughs> the CRA sounds like a tactical group from Russia. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, I, I'm waiting for a phone call because I'm actually supposed to get my Tesla today. Oh, fancy. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Well, I was supposed to get it at 1230, but for some reason they're behind and mm. um and so i'm waiting for a phone call to go pick it up to go pick up your Tesla. this video is lagging funny. right now how do i is it me or am i lagging right now or is this how it it is no i mean you're fine on my end but maybe that's why i keep talking over you <laughs> it looks like a chinese movie right now you know <laughs> I don't know what those look It like. definitely does because you're like talking and then you're laughing and nothing comes out and then like a second later. Like, oh. <laughs> like a dubbed movie. <laughs> it looks like that. Yeah. Oh it, my it's God, definitely a hilarious. dubbed movie. <clears throat> but yeah, that's pretty much how I started. Um, that's that's how I branched out to started doing like rentals and then like getting into the whole manufacturing part of mm -hmm. it. Nice. That's that's and my That's my little story. And so now your company structure is, you know, you have your, I guess your head office out in Austin, you have an office in Boston, but I know you do stuff across, like when live events were live, like I felt like you were on a plane every day. 
going somewhere else to yeah. do another job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, man, you always think about like how you want a job that you can travel with, you know, mm -hmm. and then you get it and then you're like, man, I hate traveling all <laughs> the damn time. Do you ever get like that? Do you travel a lot with your ordeal? Yeah, definitely. And, uh, it's funny cause right before COVID hit, I was pretty much home for two weeks and then I'd be gone for two weeks and then home. So like, mm -hmm from january until august i was set to be doing that schedule home for two weeks gone for two weeks and i remember yeah. right before covid shut down i was like i don't know how much longer i can do this like i don't i love the traveling part i actually miss airplane yeah. food believe it or not <laughs> but it was, just, actually, it was just it was just a lot you. it is a lot you know especially time differences and stuff that kills me yeah well i mean we got our wish. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I wish I didn't make that wish anymore. I kind of miss <laughs> traveling. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, it'll be back. <clears throat> Just but maybe eventually. Literally, I, would, I, I looked at I looked at my um, itinerary to see like how much traveling I did. And I think I flew like around. I think it was like 65 to 75 times last last year. Wow. And think cool. and you have to think about it. Like, I don't go to all my gigs. Like, I mm -hmm. send my employees out to my gigs. So we're we're flying even more than just that. I only show up to, like, the big um, events where I have, like, a personal relationship with my client. Those are yeah. the only big ones that I actually go out to. But normally I send my, my guys out to, to do the, the leg work. But, I mean, that's a mm -hmm. lot of flying. <clears throat> that is it's that's fun crazy it's note. great but you have you you have to um you have to be okay with like living out of a hotel or spending extra money because that's that's what's gonna happen you know yep all of a sudden your coffee is five dollars every time you want one you can't just go make one out of your <laughs> keurig anymore <laughs> exactly um <clears throat> if but, you but could give yeah, seriously. Well, well, in like a year, I'm sure we will see each other in Vegas or something. Hopefully, not 2021, but maybe 2022. <laughs> in a year, girl, I am going in like three weeks. Yeah, well, I'm not allowed in your country right now either, so there's that. Uh, but I'm sure we'll be like, hey, remember when we were like not flying every week and how nice that was? So I'm sure the tables will turn all the way around again. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right about that. So if we were back in the day, or I mean, even now, if you could give a piece of advice to someone who's just starting out, or maybe they're struggling in their existing business, what would that be? Um, let's see if I can give a piece of advice. The A lot of the ads that I used to use um, were just money waste, like just waste of money. Facebook ads. To me, waste of money. Either that or I just did it wrong. But <laughs> the, 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 the thing that I spent money on that has had the most um, ROI on is definitely SEO, search oh. engine optimization. It's mm -hmm. like you have to spend your money on your website and you have to spend money on how people find your website. And that's going to be your number one money maker, mm -hmm. hands down hands down that's the only thing that i would ever spend money on now i don't even do ads anymore um yeah but but yeah seo just try just find a good company that that gives you updates on it um and you don't have to spend like a ton a ton of money on it you do have to spend some money on it you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh and your website is going to be your first line of defense so i constantly see myself being impulsive on changing this up and updating my website all the time. And I think you told me that you do too. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and, and I feel like I've been wasting so much money on doing that. So I, um, another piece of advice is to try to get somebody that has uh, just, just pay somebody, you know, in advance or not in advance but pay somebody up front as far as like um how, what am i trying to say here 
Like setting up your website? Like just pay someone from the get-go? No. Well, yeah. In order for you to get the quality, just pay for that. Because the website is something that you should spend money on instead of trying to be cheap and like trying to like uh, nickel and dime here and there. That's mm-hmm. that's one of the advice. Because not until I got, uh, I think Cherie uh, was the one that did my website and I paid her. And, and you know, paying her... Uh, versus what I paid other people before, I've had this website the longest, the the design mm-hmm. the longest, and it's just so much better than it's been be- than before, and it's just based on on me being cheap sometimes and like being like, oh, I don't think I should pay this much for this and this much for that, but <laughs> it has to deal with like you know you I, I guess I guess it's true when they say you know you you pay for what you get. Mm-hmm. How, how's that how's that statement go yeah i mean you that's pay you, pay you, pay for. For. you get what you get what you pay you get what you pay for there you go yeah i mean and that's true in photo booths and, too um, right there's so many cheap photo booths out there oh, but you get yeah yeah and webcam. i guess it, it goes the same way as me exactly with the webcam it goes the same with me like my services um they're relatively above average but that's because we put in like you know more than the necessary person does like if i do a template i'll see like a little piece there and i'm like hey get this fixed i don't think this is the way they want it you know and while other people will be like yeah it's just a waste of time um <clears throat> or i'm talking about like like taping stuff presence it's just overall quality i i think that i um rate my services a little bit higher just due to the fact that i pay more attention to to things in detail and i give a lot more so in that sense that's why i started paying more for other stuff like website and seo and stuff like that yeah so don't be cheap is basically what i would tell myself don't be cheap love it (laughs) don't be afraid to spend the money yep because you're gonna like you know you're 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 paying for what you're expecting is this this is camera moving right now yeah it is is the camera moving <clears throat> it moved a little bit okay sorry you're i'm like now. this camera's moving by itself it wasn't me okay that's anyway, creepy. whatever don't be cheap old me right. don't be cheap spend the money yep that's the funny that's thing a is great actually i say this while gambling too <laughs> scared money don't make money i say that I was- all the time just going to say, that. I don't even know who I heard that from once. And I was like, it's so true. And I have like this thing where I don't really think about spending money sometimes. And you're the same way because I've been to Vegas with you. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, we're just like, whatever. It's a in the moment thing. But I think that it makes a difference in business because like, you know, we'll buy the the better product when it comes to a backdrop or, you know, a photo booth or you always know you can make back your investment, right? If you spend the money, there's going to yeah. be a bigger and better job out there just because you have that piece of equipment or or software or whatever. So yeah, scared money don't make money. I need to figure out who said that. Scared money don't make money. That's going to be the title of this ordeal. Scared money don't make money. <laughs> All right. Like I'll see if I can use that. What, uh, <laughs> what's been your favorite marketing strategy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what's been uh, your favorite marketing strategy to date? <clears throat> Honestly, a lot of my business comes from like repeat business, right? Mm-hmm. Repeat business of corporate clients. And uh, it's more so of just being very personable with those big clients that you know that can branch out and get you more stuff. <clears throat> That's yes. basically all I'm doing right now. Well, not right now, but before um it was always word of mouth it was always Mm -hmm. hey um i have this other friend that works for i don't know columbia records or like sony or something and they're looking for something and uh my ordeal is just always you know do more with the clients that you have and in their eyes they won't go anywhere else because they'll be like oh my god min does it so great oh he like he didn't even have to do this and he did this and blah, blah, blah. And that's, and that's kind of how I got my start with like iHeartRadio, for example, mm-hmm. they love me over there. Um, just because of that simple fact of, 
I'm just able to take care of everything without them having to um, like tell me what to do in a way. Yeah. Yeah. That's and sometimes whenever they have new employees, I'm, I'm like, I'm telling them what to do, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, oh my God. But, but yeah, it, it's just more of a, my marketing thing is just trying to get more personal with it. Um, my SEO does my online marketing. And then once I can communicate with somebody, then I start talking to them. Um, but what's funny is whenever I get my leads and stuff, I never call them. I'm always really? email. Hmm. Yeah. Do you call? Are you we a call caller? Every, every single lead, wedding <clears throat> lead, doesn't matter. Corporate client, get them on a call. Yeah. <laughs> I know that is so much better, but I just hate, I don't even talk to my girlfriends on the phone. I mean, not girlfriends, but I don't talk, I don't even talk to like the person I'm dating on the phone, let alone like a, a client or anything. But I, mm. I would say that that's probably the better approach is to call. Um, so that again, you can get on a person, a more personal level. And, um, I think I'm actually going to start doing that. <laughs> you should. Thanks, Min. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness yeah calling it's it's a lot of work but honestly it really does pay off and it's i think the biggest payoff for calling people is the fact that not a lot of people do it especially like yeah. um what i call like part-timers who don't really care about their business because there's part-timers who really care about their business and then there's part-timers who really don't and they just want the paycheck and they literally will just automate the entire process. There's no personal touch to it whatsoever. And so when we're up against someone like that and we pick up the phone the same day we get the lead, people are like, wow, there's a real person. It's like, yeah, we're real. Yeah. <laughs> you can call us. <laughs> exactly. but. See, I, I know about this. The funny thing, because I've been in sales my whole life, but, you know, mm -hmm. working in a call center for like seven years, it's like, I'm done talking to people right now, <laughs> but I know, okay. I know that that is the way to do it because being personable with somebody is the way that you sell to somebody, mm -hmm. you know, Yeah. unless you're just completely cheap, then, then that other way works too. But yeah, <laughs> being personal with somebody is definitely the number way, number one way to, to do things. Fine, I'll call my clients and stuff now. <laughs> well, let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, fine, fine. Um, okay, my last question for you is if you, and I know you kind of already answered this one, but if you were starting out again, like go back to min 2012, is that around the time you started? Yeah. What, yeah, what would you tell yourself besides don't be cheap? <laughs> <laughs> Don't move to Boston. That girl will oh, bad no. for you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know, it was great. I, I, I love that I moved over there and I decided to come back because it it gave me a chance. Because when I went over there, I didn't know anybody. So I was a hermit in my in my house. I was a hermit. I never left. I never went out. So that gave me the time to like build my empire up. So I don't regret it. Nice. Sometimes you just got to, you know do some things to to motivate yourself i guess but yep. i don't know um i spent so much money on research and development that it is ridiculous like i have so much stuff in my warehouse if there is a way i can go back and tell myself quit buying so much shit because <laughs> Holy shit. Do you know how many micro USB cords I have? Like Probably a lot. A buck like <laughs> I I think it's like eight feet by five feet high of buckets of wires. What? So many freaking I mean, wires I have. I'm ad I'm always an advocate for extra you. backups, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> I have so much backup, it's crazy. Yes, backup is is definitely something that i mean we already do it as well and mm -hmm. it's funny because it's always that one time that you don't bring your backup that something happens yep yeah i know and, and that happened to me that one time didn't bring that backup the camera breaks oh, no. and uh and all things go to hell <clears throat> <laughs> but yeah don't buy everything 
And don't be cheap. But don't be cheap. <laughs> but don't buy everything. Don't buy everything, but don't be cheap. That means spend money on the stuff that's worth it. So There you go. Or that you think it's worth it. And if it isn't worth it, then you can always resell it. Trust me, you can resell anything. <laughs> yeah, this, this is true. I've seen you sell everything about Everybody 10 times Everybody knows over. this about me. Yeah. Exactly. Love I it. call myself the recycling man because I recycle. <laughs> I'm a photo booth recycling. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. And it was so short notice. So uh, I really appreciate you jumping on and, and doing this because I wanted to interview you for a while. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yes, I refuse to go on any of these things because I just hate talking. <laughs> well, I feel special now. We're going to stick you on YouTube and on feel the podcast. feel very special. <laughs> I told you I don't even talk to people on the phone. Oh, my goodness. I was going to get you to text message me. Hey, can you just text me for the podcast? And I, I could just, <laughs> you could just have you a reply? screen of text, like asking me questions. <laughs> and I'll just reply on the text. Oh, my God. I actually like that idea. We should do that next time yes. we'll do a text I'm down for a that text anytime. youtube okay I'm, next I'm, time I'm we start texting I'll, I'll, I'll record it just put it on there <laughs> okay all right you have a great night man. goodbye from the u.s